G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with the Manufacturer Series combination from last weekend and as you can see by now we are in Group 4 and we're actually at another crap combination for the Toyota 86. I'm still waiting for a handling track to come up, still waiting, the timer is on. But luckily for me and due to that fact, um, I am in 19th, I'm the 19th worst rated DR player in the lobby, therefore um, I can finish quite low in the field and not really take a driver rating hit. But we're going to go out for the qualifying session here and this just confirms basically what, what the go is with this car. Everyone comes out of the pits ahead, or about five cars ahead all each, in each other's slipstream coming out of the pits as the game automatically releases you. And we come out and, yeah, look, we're behind the pack already. So we don't get a slipstream for this first lap. So we're just going to do a banker lap at this point and see how we go. Um, coming through turn one. We get a nice turn one. We actually get really close to that apex. So it's actually a decent turn one. And this lap, uh, we'll see what it turns out to be as we skip ahead to the end. A 204.3. Look at that. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. But we're going to go out for another qualifying lap. And I very, very quickly, as fast as I possibly could... Um, cancel back to the pits and jumped out to hopefully get a bit close to people ahead, but I don't know if it quite worked out um, But we're gonna go for a second qualifying lap It's gonna be faster and we're gonna go through a track guide if someone gives us a bump behind So for turn one looking on the right hand side 50 meter board just under the 50 meter board uh, Dab the brakes turn in at the same time and get into that apex nicely and coming through this long straight very lengthy straight once again and get another bump from the car behind. I wanted him to go past to not hold him up, but he gave me the bump, so I'll take it. So Docklin section coming up now, turns two, three, four, and five. Look on the left-hand side, it's just halfway between the 150 and 100 meter board. There's another pole between the two. I was braking directly on that. So we get through here nicely. It's just all throttle control through here. Don't cut these curbs here. It's just painted curbs, bit weird, but um, don't cut those. And then coming into turn six, looking on the left-hand side, uh, on the road, just as the white dots start on the left-hand side, just brake, dab the brake and turn in at the same time, and then try and get onto the power as early as possible. That red paint on the apex is not very grippy at all, so you've got to anticipate that. Coming down this straight that isn't straight, long turn 7 and turn 8, basically you're just taking a line of least resistance. This, I don't really count as a corner, because it's very long and shallow, it's almost unnoticeable. This is turn uh, 9, and then turn 10, I... I believe and then coming up into the hairpin turn 11 looking on the left hand side it's just after the 150 meter board there's another sort of light pole halfway between the 150 and 100 meter board slightly closer to the 150 meter board then turn two and I was using that as the breaking point get onto the power nicely and then coming up into the final sector an S's handling section so the Toyota 86 is finally actually good around part of this circuit left hand side just as those flashing lights on the barrier start break dab the brakes and turn in and then fifth gear and then just lift on all these apexes and lift a little bit again onto the bow nicely and then back over to the right and just after the 50 meter board dab the brakes and turn in it's actually a lot tighter that final corner than you think and you got to anticipate that again not quite sure if I'm in the slipstream of the Subaru but I'll just follow him just in case I am and I come across the line with the 203.7 puts us provisional eighth and we'll see where that puts us uh, on the grid here. So we're going to skip all the way ahead to the start of the race. We actually stayed in eighth. So actually, um, I, I guess it's all right considering I'm this 19th, uh, 19th DR level player in this lobby. Having qualified eighth is pretty good. So big thanks to the car that was bumping me on my qualifying lap. But now we're going to turn our attention to the race which is a completely different ball game this race it's actually a horrible race if I'm com being completely honest with you six times fuel two times tire wear now you might be looking at that thing and that's a bit how you're going and it, that's because it is I honestly suspect that they accidentally m switched like mixed up by accident the multipliers on the tire and fuel normally we see about six times tire and two times fuel and that gives us a nice race but we've got six times fuel and two times tire so basically tire wear is not really that much of an issue but fuel is and also what is an issue is the very cold tires on turn one as i completely break too late for turn two crash into the barrier get a 1.5 second penalty and get swamped by the pack so this race has already 
laps that have gone downhill because I'm going to have to serve this penalty on the next lap and we go past this Viper who has got the slipstream with the Subaru but we've got the inside for turn 6 and we just hang that uh, Viper out to dry turning it a little bit later uh, than he anticipated and on the following lap we're going to serve this penalty and get overtaken by a load of cars and the final car to overtake is going to be this Ford Mustang who's going to go around the outside of turn 6. We're going to get a good slipstream though down the straight we'll see how that turns out by the end as we fast forward all the way down here and then coming into the braking zone i believe we've got another car going up the inside yes we do so you can see this race is quite painful and this is honestly what i anticipated to happen to be honest but what i didn't anticipate was the penalty which put me further down the grid so now i'm basically less than two tenths off last and by the following lap that car does indeed overtake us at the end of the long straight and we are actually officially in last position but basically we were trying to feel safe as much as possible which is why but i figure now as i understeer into the barrier again and get another 1.5 second penalty which we're going to serve on this lap so this race is, is gone i thought i was going to get another penalty there but we serve this and this clicks something in my mind i, I figure i've got to do something different here otherwise i'm going to just finish in 20th so let's go. I was thinking very long and hard about what I could do here. Now this was a fuel saving race, a very very heavy fuel saving race. Uh, one where you go into the pits for fuel but not tyres. You skip the tyre change because the tyre wear is not high enough. Um, but here we go. So we're going to come through this lap. And now what was going through my mind now was... Well, this is a heavy fuel saving race. Everyone's going to be fuel saving. How much fuel would I use going flat out? Because if I can sort of save enough fuel in this first stint and refuel and go 100% pace in the second stint, what will that do for me? And we'll have a look here as this is my flat out lap. I had to do a test to test how much fuel I used on a flat out lap and this was this lap here. And I'd already made the decision at this point, I'm going to do another race. So the fact that I had to do this flat out lap in the first race and sabotage my progress, essentially, because I'm using way more fuel than I need to be, than I should be at this point in this race. And it's going to come back to bite me at the end of it. Um, it doesn't really affect me because I'm going to do another race. But essentially, we were 50.0% at the start of lap 5. And by the end of it, we were 35.0. So... 15% and that is extremely high for number one 15% of fuel per lap that's absolutely astronomical but now I was working out okay well how many laps can I do on a full tank of fuel going at 100% so 15% of lap where well you got 15 30 45 60 75 90 that gets you six laps and 90%. You also got to remember the pit lane is halfway through the lap, so there's a little bit extra fuel to get from the end of the pit lane to the start of a lap. So the fact that we've only used 90%, we can afford to take that extra bit, uh, extra bit on that same stint as well. So we'll assume for argument's sake it's about 5% a lap. So if I fill up to 95%, I'll get half a lap in and then six laps uh, going at full pace. So what lap do I have to come in? Well, six laps plus a bit, so 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. So 10 laps is coming in, going from lap 10 to 15 is six laps, so plus the extra half, we can go in at 9.5. So because we did our flat out lap on this stint here, we did not have enough fuel to get to 9.5 here, but uh, we're gonna come in on this lap and we can actually break slightly later and take an earlier apex at this hairpin because you can see it becomes a 90 degree corner. We're going to go in and skip the tie change. And this is where we're going to refuel. Now we've come in earlier than I need to. To do a flat out uh, flat out, uh, flat out run. But we're going to refuel. We're actually going to refuel all the way to 100%. I want as much fuel as possible. I've got nothing to lose. So we'll refuel all the way up to 100. A very long stop. My goodness. Extremely long stop. I didn't really want any more fuel problems than I already have, so that's why I went for the full 100% refuel, and I have come out at the back of the grid, but we'll just follow the rest of this race, we'll go through it fairly quickly to be honest, and we'll see all of the positions that I do gain, and then this final sector is about the only place on the track where I actually have an advantage against another car, and I've got cold tyres again, so that's not good, and that was something 
that I really need to get a hold of. Because I feel, I think, sitting there refueling for so long, it just took all the temperature out of the tyres. And because we now come out of the pits with a small portion of tyre wear, yeah, you, you um, cold tyre effects through that final sector on that extra half lap you do is really high. But this is where we begin to make up some moves. So this Ford Mustang goes very wide at the final corner and hits the barrier. We make our way past there. And then on uh, turn one of a couple of laps later, this Viper goes a little bit wide of the apex and loses speed on the exit. He's got the slipstream of that uh, Mercedes SLS up ahead, but I think he's fuel saving quite heavily, which I'm not at this exact moment in this race because there's a slight left kink. Mercedes moves in front of me and gives me a slip. He had a penalty. He's going to serve that. We're up into 17th at this point. I believe we've got quite a large skip as we get a very nice turn six uh, in wake of that penalty. We skip all the way ahead to the final lap where we finally caught up to this guy who breaks early and then the Peugeot RCZ of obviously suffering quite high levels of tyre wear. FFs are about the only car that probably can't get away with without a tyre change. He goes very wide at the Docklands. We managed to skate through there nicely up into 15th, which is where we ultimately finished in 15th. So a pretty shocking race. And I made this, this, the decision very early that I'm going to do a second race pretty much as soon as I went wide at uh, turn two, lap one, and lost a load of positions. That is basically when I decided, okay, I'm going to do a second race. And that's quite risky because we know the disconnect issues happening at the moment. So I could have very well disconnected from the second slot. But I actually didn't. I come home with 118 points in this first uh, first slot, which is not good enough, frankly. So we're going to go again, and we actually get into our second slot this time, which is an absolute miracle. I have been disconnecting from most of my second attempts recently. Obviously a bit of an issue with the game at the moment, and I'm ranked 19th in the lobby again. So once again, there's not really any DR to lose from doing this race. And as long as I can... Not even necessarily get a good result. If I can just have a clean race, I'll be happy with that because I know the Toyota 86 is not a good car for here. Your good cars are going to be um, your good cars are going to be the FF cars and power cars. But here we go. I completely skipped the qualifying session because my lap time is slightly slower and it actually puts me in eighth again. And I'm I'm honestly okay with that. My previous qualifying time would have put me seventh. So. Yeah, there's not really too many issues there, and it wasn't really worth showing the qualifying session. But as for now, let's just enjoy, finally, for this video, the manufacturer's introduction. lovely as always we meet ourselves on the grid so here we go finally we're gonna have a look and see if we can actually get a good race here as we meet my car specifically in eighth position again so fairly uh, fairly high levels of deja vu from the previous race so everyone's in fuel map six to start off uh, with their initial launch in auto drive there I choose fuel map one to get a little bit of an advantage on the car ahead because I need a strong slipstream as possible for as long as possible in this race that is the key to driving a handling car at a power combination but here we go we're gonna get into the slipstream of hazard uh, ahead and hopefully just basically try and keep our positions for as long as we can I know that I'm slow here just because of the combination in the car. I know that I'm slow, I know they're gonna lose positions, but essentially, it's just limiting any position loss for as long as possible. So as long as I can keep any positions for the maximum amount of time, which I know is not infinite, um, that's fine. And I was really holding on to the fact that I wanted to go flat out in my second stint. So I knew from the previous race that it's 15% of fuel per lap and that's pretty dead on as well because yeah uh, because of the previous 
uh, previous race where I did the test, I calculated and it was pretty much dead on 15.0%. So I know that I need to get to 9.5, lap 9.5. So halfway through lap 9, which is where the pit lane is, halfway through the lap, is where I need to get to. So I need to do a lot of fuel saving in this first uh, first half of the race. So I need to do 9, 9.5 laps, essentially, on a tank of fuel, which is a lot of fuel, um, a lot of laps on quite a high multiplier. I actually did not even work out how much uh, or remember, I don't even remember how much fuel per lap that is but you can see we're going for that strategy now and it means that we're slow at the start of this race so Aston Martin V8 Vantage goes past, there's not really much we could do about that Power Car is going to be a lot faster in a straight line and he's going to be making positions up early I've now got a Lexus RCF behind, let's see how long we can keep this position off in for while, all the while we're trying to fuel save so you can quite quickly see how horrible this race is because it's just there's nothing I can do I'm a sitting duck and it's an absolutely horrible situation to be in and the only glimmer of hope I have is that final sector it's the only place where I can actually gain and we're basically going to be trying to maximize that sector as much as possible but coming through uh, the end of this lap here, I bump the barrier on the exit, this is the end of lap 2 by the way, and I've now got this Lexus looking around the outside of turn 1, that's just going to slow us both up, so I kind of hope he backs out of this, um, but we'll see if this translates into another loss of position for us. He actually does back out last second, and uh, however it was not early enough for me to get back over to the racing line, I have a slightly compromised turn 1, and because I've now got out of the slipstream of the V8 Vantage up ahead, the Lexus now has the power to just pull his way past. We try to slot into this gap and misjudge it slightly and end up uh, end up with contact with both cars there. And um, But that's fine. We manage to stay in ninth, but we get overtaken by this Dodge Viper coming down the back straight that isn't straight. And we've got another car extremely close behind me. And now, is he going to go for the dive bomb into the hairpin here? He actually doesn't, but what actually transpires is another car going down the outside, obviously having missed the braking point, making contact with me, gets me a compromised hairpin, um, but I think I was going to lose this position anyway, because now the, another Viper behind has the overspeed on the exit, so that just really goes to show how off the pace this Toyota is, especially coming out of low speed corners. And he gets clean past me into the handling section. On the next lap, let's have a look as we head through the penalty zone. This confunction guy obviously served a penalty. Drops off and releases a guy called H. Karuda15. Releases him behind me. Now this guy, H. Karuda, actually turned out to be a freaking legend. Because what he did was, instead of overtake me like every other car previously, he actually bumped me for ages, and we'll see, uh, basically, cue the montage of him bumping me. I was flashing the hazards, as I did with every other car that passed me, and this was the actual guy that listened. He actually bumped me here, and he's going to continue to do this for several laps. So he bumps me here, and here, and there. Massive bump there, enough for me to change gear, and then uh, again, again, another bumps, more bumps, loads of bumping. Until this point where he kind of didn't go for it, but then he kind of did. I was starting to think at this point maybe he's cottoned on that he's actually losing a lot of time being behind me, which he indeed was. But he bumps me a couple more times until this point. This was the final bump. So I knew that all that bump drafting allowed me to save more and more fuel. So I was quite happy to get to 9.5 on my first stint. But everybody went in behind there was at least five cars there was a brief look behind there you may not have caught it but there was and if you paused it at that exact moment you'll see five, at least five cars going into the pit lane so what immediately clicked in my head is great they're all going to undercut me aren't they because now i've got to run on my own i've got to do a lap by myself while saving as much fuel as i was while getting bump drafted and i thought i did a good job of that because i had three percent going out onto this straight but I whacked it up into fuel map 1 to try and avoid that undercut, but what actually happened is that completely drained the tank, and I've actually run out of fuel at this point, coming into the braking zone for the hairpin, and that just means I can't get any power down here on that little bit of power application after the exit of the hairpin into the pit lane. 
I wasn't able to get any power down. So I've actually made my lap target, but I lost a little bit of time there. So I fuel up to 95%. So 5% to get through this extra half lap here to the, to the end of this lap. And then uh, six laps going full, full chat. But here we go. This is what happened. H. Karuda and the next car goes past and NSFU goes past as well. So I've been undercut by three players. That is not good because now... I'm stuck behind these guys and I'm not going to be able to overtake really because my car is so crap. So while well, the strategy in theory might have worked okay, what I should have done is probably gone in on 8.5, like 8.5 and um, that is what I should have done instead of trying to force the car to go an extra lap, which I didn't have enough fuel for or I guess technically I did have enough fuel but I sort of plebbed up the fuel mapping and used it all down the straight by accident but now I've got all these cars ahead and what I wanted to actually do is come out ahead of these guys and make inroads to people ahead of me who aren't that far up the road because I know I can lap way faster going 100% but now you can see I'm heading down the straight and everyone's in slipstream I can't even keep up I've got slipstream everyone has slipstream I can't keep up but then I break way too late here this was a dive bomb and, and a half and I do not make the apex I completely run into the side of that Mazda there and that was a very very dodgy move I actually just missed the breaking point is what happened but I was too focused on um, how frustrated I was that I came out behind and I, I actually kept this position from the Corvette I should have honestly probably redressed it just one position but uh, looking back at it that's what I should have done but I didn't so apologies for that I was just not really thinking about what actually happened because what would have happened if I didn't make contact with the Mazda is I would have gone deep and then that Corvette would have got back past me so I made contact with the player and kept a position not really the best racing there and not the best move I've done probably one of the worst moves I've done for a while actually but um, we'll just see how this race progresses and it actually doesn't turn out to be too big of a problem as we're coming into the hairpin here we have made the position up from the Mazda down the straight that's a legitimate move down the straight using slipstream that was a legitimate move on the Mazda and then we've now got the slipstream of the Lexus RCF coming into the same portion of the track and we go out for the move this time and you know what I do I miss the bloody braking point again and I go way too deep so this is what I'm talking about I've now got a few, full tank of fuel and I've come out of the pits with worn tires so it's a very weird very weird dynamic I've got here and then that Corvette makes his way past again so I guess that's technically a redress <laughs> he makes his way back ahead of me and it's back to how we were coming out of the pits so you can see I'm actually just getting held up fighting with these guys because they can easily overtake me on the straight and it's way more difficult for me to make any positions back just because of how many straights there are so the Mazda serves the penalty he got by cutting the Dockland section on the previous lap. He serves that. I've got the slipstream off the back of the Mazda at this point. And then coming into the hairpin this time, he opens up the outside, but the inside opens up. And I switch to the inside as he tries to defend on the outside from my initial move. And he opens up the inside. I managed to get that move done. I was quite happy with that move myself. Some people might not like it because it was a very abrupt move coming into a braking zone, but... I felt as though I was okay with that. I knew where every other car was around me. I definitely didn't feel like there was a risk of making contact with any innocent parties there. So I was happy with that switch to the inside last second. We're going to come through this sector now. We're coming up towards sort of the closing stages of the race. We've got three laps to go. And I know that I've got plenty of fuel to go. As the Mazda drops off through that handling section as kind of expected there. We've got the slipstream off the back of the Corvette who's not quite as close to the Lexus as I am to the Corvette but he still manages to pull away from me and then coming into the Docklands now that is a legitimate move there dive bomb yes but I met the apex and there was wasn't really any contact there so I'm happy with that I think there was a little bit of contact as the Corvette tried to sort of turn in to defend but I feel as though that was fine I stopped it on the apex and I'm going to keep that one there. So I've got the slipstream of the Lexus coming up the back straight into the hairpin now. He doesn't defend it. So I think at this point he's got probably some fuel to save and wants to be behind me to try and do that. As he does, he slots in nicely between myself and the Corvette. And I've now got myself up into 12th. Finally. So we came out of the pits and we wanted to be in 12th. And we've now 
gone through all the way through to the end of lap 13 basically we've only just got up into 12th now the next few cars are 3.8 seconds up the road and we've been losing a load of time fighting with these guys as you can see we've posted a 204.4 on lap 12 lap 11 was a 207 so it really just goes to show if it was not fighting that was probably that gap there in that one lap and you can see consistent 204s all the way up until the end here so there was definitely loads of time to gain and I'm just absolutely kicking myself that I sort of messed up that pit part. I also mess up this part all the way to the end and I get a penalty at the Docklands. Man, you idiot. At the end of the race, we've, we've played the whole race out with no penalties. You know, we messed up the strategy a little bit, but I felt as though... 12th was okay considering the previous turn of events of the race but now I got myself half a second penalty on the final lap I don't even have an opportunity to try and serve the penalty and make up that time lost again so what happens now is that I have to cross the line with this half second and for some reason the game will round up a penalty to the nearest second if you cross the line with it no matter how no matter how big the penalty is if it was um, if it was 1.001 seconds it will round up to two seconds so it's a painful prospect, but I've got to try and basically gain a second through these S's, which I've tried to do as much as possible. And honestly, to be fair to myself, I actually had a pretty good S section there. I gained four tenths on the car behind, near enough. And on the exit, it's about half a second, the gap, but of course, it's not enough. I lose a second. I get one second added on, and I lose myself two positions. So I cross the line in 12th, but unfortunately, it will come to 14th having crossed the line with the half second. So, oh man, a really disappointing result. Again. I don't know what's going on, I'm just struggling for results recently. 130 points, I guess a slight improvement from the 118 I had in the previous slot, but it's still not enough. And it's just, I, I don't know, I'm really struggling with this at just of the late especially with all the disconnect that is the most frustrating thing is the disconnect problem i'm having and evidently a load of other players in australia i don't think it's as big as an issue in new zealand but in australia there's like several people disconnecting from some of the slots and it's just really painful it's really it's really inhibiting my results and that wasn't really a direct problem in this particular race but it's just a problem across everything and it's meaning that the only results i have are the ones where I managed to get into the slot but then have a poor race. Normally I would do another slot and have no issue, but because I'm disconnecting from that slot, I have to keep the previous crap result. So that's what's happening recently. In this particular race, it was just a poor round for the Toyota 86 and a couple of mistakes by me, but look, I didn't go again because that race was extremely painful and, you know, once again, just another bad result to add to the books recently. And that's kind of it. I wish I had more, but that's it for the moment so i guess do hit the like button if you enjoyed and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me do leave a comment as well questions comments and constructive criticism as always very much appreciated but that's going to be the end of this one today and that means that is it from me so once again i do thank you very much for watching see you later